know, it's an exciting time of year as we hit this point in the Easter season. And I've always just kind of thought of it as, you know, we get to the ascension, it's awesome, our Lord ascends into heaven, next week we have Pentecost, then we get a couple of other big feast days, like Trinity Sunday and Corpus Christi, and then of course here we have the great solemnity of the Sacred Heart. They have it everywhere, but no one does it as well as we do. And then, you know, and then we just kind of move into ordinary time. Wah, wah. You know, it's like it just kind of, we get back to normal. Well, this week in praying and preparing and just reading through the readings, just something was brought to my attention I never really thought of before that kind of puts all of this in a good context in the way it really affects us here on the ground at Sacred Heart, I would say. And what I mean by that is, you know, you have Jesus with the apostles as he's about to ascend into heaven, you know, and they're asking him about the restoration of the kingdom. And I love the way one of the scholars I read put it. It's like he won't tell them when, but he tells them how. And essentially, that's he says that you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now, this first reading today is from the Acts of the Apostles. It's chapter 1, verses 1 to 11, right? And you have Jesus telling the 12, well, the 11 at this point, that you will be my witnesses. I'm sending you out. Now, we get 28 more chapters now. And of course, at this point, St. Paul is still Saul, and he's kind of public enemy number one when it comes to the church. It's only going to take a couple of chapters that he goes out, he's persecuting the way, persecuting Christians, and then, of course, has his great conversion. And it takes years, but he's formed more and more, works through things with the apostles, goes out all over the place. By the time we get to chapter 28, Paul, who we heard in his letter to the Ephesians, Paul, a prisoner for the Lord, you know, he's in prison in Rome by the end, and these are the last two verses of the Acts of the Apostles, so chapter 28, verses 30 and 31. And Paul lived there two whole years at his own expense and welcomed all who came to him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ quite openly and unhindered. So basically, there's Paul at the end of Acts of the Apostles doing exactly what Jesus told them that they would do, being his witnesses throughout Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Paul's in Rome. That's where he's going to die. And obviously, it didn't end in Rome. The church continues to move out throughout the whole world to this very day, to this very point. Now, the aspect I want to focus on this morning, and enabled in order to do this, I'm going to quote again from the same book I quoted from last week, and I'm using my Kindle again because I don't have a hard copy, but, you know, here we are. Um, it's the book by Francis Mayer is his name, and it's called True Confessions. And this is the last chapter of the book. And like I said last week, this book is about the state of the church right now, and he interviews all sorts of different people. Well, this chapter is his own reflection on that. And the thing I love about Francis Mayer is he's very realistic. He's not cynical, but he's also not Pollyanna. And he, he brings in uh, some quotes from an author, who, a French author who passed away quite a while back, George Bernanos. Uh, this, this author wrote, for example, Diary of a Country Priest. It's a great book if you've never had the chance to read it. He cites George Bernanos as saying, the history of the church is basically one long train wreck, and everything just keeps falling apart. And the one thing that we really have to our credit is the saints. And we live in the age of the saints. And ultimately, we are called to be those saints. And I'm going to quote from Fran Mayer a little bit at length here this morning because it's just so good. I wish I could read you the whole chapter, but eventually you got to go to breakfast. It is Mother's Day after all. But this is what he says. When Scripture speaks of the cloud of witnesses who surround us, we rightly think of the holy men and women who have gone on to God before us. But they're also among us, living here and now, too ordinary to be noticed. Saints are numerous. Saints are varied. They always have been. That's the nature of Christian life. 
Today's world, for all its noise and indifference, is no exception. And our saints include more than just the towering figures that populate our religious imagination, whose great works can loom over us like the face of Everest. If a famously difficult man, like St. Jerome, can be a father of the church and a model of Christian faith, there's room on the train for you and for me. Sanctity, becoming a saint, seems hard to us, George Bernano said, because we don't understand it. Many of us never seriously wonder what it is, but saints are merely people who one day became aware that they and those around them are each an imago dei, an image of God, were made in the image of God. They consider what that means. They think about what it requires. And then, this is actually the hard part, they act accordingly. They pay attention to the real meaning of Christ's words in the Acts of the Apostles. You shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Pious intentions come and go. Actions remake the world. That's why the book is called Acts. I love that last line. Pious intentions come and go. Actions remake the world. That's why the book is called Acts. And that's what I really wanted to focus on this morning. And when I say specifically here at Sacred Heart, you may have noticed on the way in, the bulletin looks different this week, kind of like it did back in October when we asked everybody to participate in a parish survey. And we have, with the bulletin this week, not only the results of the survey, because I want you to see what that is, but if you go to the QR code here, we have a little, few bullet points to kind of explain what's going on. But if you go to the QR code, it takes you to an 18-page document. And don't worry, it's not just straight-up text. There's a lot of uh, graphs and things about the survey. But ultimately what that is, it's, it's our strategic plan. It lays out what everyone coming together has said, this is what we're looking for here at the church. These are our needs. These are our desires. There's some things that we took from the survey that are already underway. Some of you may have noticed the kneelers are already getting better. It's wonderful. That was one of the big uh, responses. Our kneelers are awful. Yes, they were, and now they're not, most of them. I don't think we're done yet. This is a great thing. We're able to do it in-house. It's been awesome. Another thing that was really loud and clear, we need another priest. And at first I took that as, come on, geez, really? But I think it, it meant an additional priest. So I appreciate that. You know, it's like we need more priests because we have a lot of demand for more sacraments. I was in the confessional for three and a half hours on Wednesday night. It's awesome, but it's also tiring. And so like to have somebody else, and then also we don't have a three and a half hour line. By the way, just as an aside, when you read about St. John Vianney in the confessional for 16 hours, A, I don't completely believe it, but the other people to, to pray for, Imagine being in line for 16 hours, right? I mean, come on. Like, those are the saints too, right? You know, so you think about these sort of things. We have a lot of good things going here at Sacred Heart. As I mentioned last week, we've now paid off the debt, which is an amazing thing, and that was anticlimactic in the way I just sort of like worked it into the homily last week. But the reason why I want to kind of like hammer home on this today is because we continue on with, as Francis Mayer said, acts, not just pious intentions. We are striving to work in conjunction with our risen and ascended Lord who stays in the midst of all of this with us. And we keep striving to come to him who didn't go up, up, and away at the ascension, but stays in our midst and continues to direct things, continues to call us just like the apostles, just like St. Paul, just like saints throughout the last 2,000 years, to go and be his witnesses. Not just go think about being his witnesses, not just have pious intentions, but to act. And my friends, we have a strategic plan for the way that we're going to keep trying to do that right here. And as you've probably seen, there's that sign down by the Circle Drive that, you know, the uh, rezoning board has a meeting this week, and it's like, wait, what is going on with that? 
The good news is, as we strive for another priest, we're going to build a house so we can house more priests. And that has to do with the rectory project. We're waiting on the permits. And eventually, we are going to talk about having everybody help make that come about. But here's the good news, right? With this strategic plan, we're hoping just to continue to invest in all of the things that we're striving to do to be Jesus' witnesses, to keep living this out. And in the same way that we've all worked so hard, we've all pitched in, and the debt has been paid off. And there's some money that's come in above and beyond the debt. And what have we done? We've saved up. We put that towards our next project, the rectory. And so that's going to help us move right along on that. We've almost got that covered. We're going to have to ask for some help in a little while. And by the way, I think you probably know this, I hate asking for money. It's one of the worst things I ever have to do. But the great thing at Sacred Heart, and with the strategic plan and the way we have this laid out, is we can do this more like a family, right? If you as a family are thinking, gosh, we need a bigger house. We want to like move into some more space, make more room for our family, and do more things. You don't get to have a capital campaign, right? What do you have to do? You have to save, you have to plan, you have to budget. And that's what we're striving to do here. We know what the needs are. We had the survey. And this is a living document. We'll do this again. We have a a strategic planning committee that will continue to meet with some regularity to make sure that this living document is accurate. But basically, as we keep all of this going, as we keep acting, not just having pious intentions, but recognizing that our ascended king is not gone away. He's in the midst of all of this with us. So that what? We can continue to come together as the body of Christ, continue to draw around him at the altar, continue to receive him in the sacraments, especially the source and summit, which is the Eucharist, and then go out there into the world that needs him so much. And to recognize we get to do that with him, and thanks be to God, we get to do that. We get to do these acts right here, right now at Sacred Heart. So my friends, it's an exciting time. Take the bulletin, hit the QR code, look at the strategic plan, and realize how awesome this is. This all continues to unfold. It continues to unfold with our Lord on the throne leading the way, and we get to participate right here at Sacred Heart. Praise be Jesus Christ.